Well, how you doing there? This is Matthew McConaughey, and you are listening to the Court Case Podcast. All right, all right, all right. Hello, and welcome to the Court Case Podcast with me, your host, James Court. And Sweet Tea. We've got a packed show for you today. We're going to be talking about the podcast festival that we went to. We're going to be chatting Squid Games because it's taking the world by storm, as well as the theatre, and we're going to be putting our verdict on all of those. It's all coming right after this. Whoop! Good afternoon, sweet tea. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> what was that? No, just this is nice because mm. I'm having like a little catch up about how our week's gone. Yes. Um, been a while since we've done like an actual episode about like us and what we've been up to and like yeah. giving reviews and stuff. It's normally been about what's in the news and I topics know. and stuff like that. So it would be an interesting yes. podcast chat. Yes, I've got one particular news story coming up. Of course in, he does. You can't not have a court case without a bit of news. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> but we've done some good stuff. Like I'm looking forward to chatting about the podcast festival. Me too. Things like that. And to talk about other stuff like Squid Games. It's, um, yep. The Fiatra. Yes, it's sort of a theatre and film and TV Who knows what we'll today. call the episode, but it'll be more like a reviews. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, I could chat a bit about, about, about James Bond as well. Yeah. But anyway, the first story that I wanted to get to is one that was actually sent to us Ooh. by a listener. Ooh. By Max in... Spooky <laughs> season. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> by Max in Hailing Island. Ooh. Oh, Max and Hayden Island, thank you so much. Yes, and um, I have not told you what this story is. No. So you're going to hear about it for the first time. But basically, the basic story is there's this bakery in Leeds and they're having an absolute mare because someone reported them over using illegal sprinkles. What? So you know like sprinkles you put on cakes yeah. and ice creams? Right, so they've had someone report them because they're using illegal sprinkles and uh, illegal sprinkles is that a th- yeah a thi- well they go into why the sprinkles are illegal all oh, right but um on their facebook page the guy who who must be the owner of the place is called get baked and it's a bakery that's a fucking fantastic name yeah i know and he's just going at it on his facebook i'm gonna read some go of his posts so the first one that started the uh it's called sprinkle gate the whole situation says, uh, just a quick heads up to let you all know that we're closed tomorrow for the following reasons. Number one, staff training. Number two, you need to get some other important shit done. The swearing is actually written on the post. Wow. Number three, everyone's fucking knackered. This weekend has been utterly sensational. We've had customer visits from countless cities, sold fuck tons of Bruce in various forms. Now, when they say sold Bruce, I have gathered from reading this, I've deduced that Bruce is kind kind of like their version of a caterpillar cake, maybe. So, oh. you know, they've got like Colin the Caterpie. Right, yeah, that would, that would make sense. I assume Bruce is their sort of animal cake. So, he said, we've sold fuck tons of Bruce in various forms. Oh, and not to mention a lovely visit from Trading Standards on Friday after someone reported us for using what we are, pa- are apparently illegal sprinkles. More on that next week. Hope you all fail. Get baked. <laughs> That's brilliant. So then... So what, was this like a Facebook or Instagram post? This is all happening over Facebook. Right. And um, so he's got... It goes into the replies of some people to sort of further explain. And he says, The sprinkles are imported from the USA and may contain colourings that aren't allowed over here. They're being tested and we will find out next week. I realise how insane this is. Unfortunately, I am only prepared to use them and no others. If I can't use them, I won't use any. I will be on sprinkle strike and won't budge for no man. Oh, my God. He sounds like an absolute nutter. (laughs) Yeah, I know. And then he replied to someone again. He said, anyone who's into sprinkles (laughs) will know what I'm on about. Sprinkles you can get in this country are totally shit. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> they look wank they bake wank <laughs> birthday bruce will never be the same again i've generally lost sleep over this not to mention the raspberry glazed donut cookie don't even get me fucking started i'll tell you one thing though if this doesn't result in a new t-shirt slogan i'm hanging up my fucking hat done and done right so those oh are his comments gosh. on the post <laughs> and he did one um final sprinkle gate update yeah at the end of the story 
where he said, it's not good news. We have heard back from trading standards and have been told that we must cease use of our sprinkles with immediate effect. This is the one thing we didn't want to happen. Obviously, we will be following the rules and removing them as of now. Whilst this might seem like it's not a big deal, it's actually very fucking annoying, as a lot of people ask for birthday bruises and raspberry glazed donut cookies are not only our best-selling cookie, but they're utterly sensational. It is highly unlikely that we will find any legal sprinkles that we will use as a replacement. British sprinkle sprinkles just aren't the same. They're totally shit and I hate them. I am extremely passionate about sprinkles. I need to think this one over. We will obviously need to make some adjustments to the menu in order to compensate for this truly horrendous ordeal. One option where the RGDCs are concerned is to glaze them as normal but just not use sprinkles. It makes me sick just thinking about it. To whoever reported us to trading standards, all I have to say is, dear Lord, what a sad little life, Jane. Dear Lord. What a sad little life, Jane. <laughs> My daughter, who is now seven months, has to live with the fact that daddy can't take her to Disneyland because man can't sell any fucking cookies. Done and done. Get baked. Oh, my God. <laughs> One, he's bloody the most hilarious businessman on social media I've come across. <laughs> yeah. But, like, I didn't even know that that was a thing. Like, there's, like, a sprinkle cult where you you got the best sprinkles <laughs> from different countries. Like, I want to know what these sprinkles taste like if they're that good. What yeah. was the, I know that America does have different, like, colourings, colouring rules on because obviously black currant changed it re- it's changed its recipe mm. because it was really high in e numbers and colorings and stuff like that and that's why it doesn't taste as nice anymore same with um ribena i yeah. believe hmm. so i knew that but i didn't know that would be in sprinkles or and it would make it taste or look different that's yeah. just crazy to me it's just the thing he's like studies them like do sprinkles in the uk really look that much different to the american ones i really want to see what the, what I the american ones i know that there's like. drinks in the U- us that they can't sell in the uk because like they've got way too much sugar in yeah them. like you won't get uh, one of my favorite drinks code red mountain dew you just don't get it in the uk really it's mad isn't it um so which is annoying but the thing that i've driven away from this and a lot of things this week that i've found in the news or from stuff that we've been doing is it's amazing to me how passionate people will get about different things they love and yeah. how you can grow up and you can just be into completely different things. Like you've got this guy who's a baker who's mad about fucking sprinkles. And for example, I have my podcast with the other people that I do at work and they're all passionate about leadership and decision making. And there's one thing that I noticed this morning. My friend sent me this guy's TikTok account and he's also appeared on Lad Bible. And I don't know if you've seen him, but there's this boy currently in the UK who is mad obsessed with trains and train spotting. And to the point where he does these videos and TikToks where he's waiting on a bridge. He's like, I'm waiting for this sort of train. And as soon as the train comes by and honks him, he goes fucking mental. It's wholesome, isn't it? It's such, it's the funnest videos I've seen in ages. And he's just so happy. And it's just mad to me. Like, like, I love like podcasting. I love going to the movies mm. and that's how I get like joy and he gets his joy from something completely different. Yeah. And everyone is completely It's sad different. though because some people would, you know, roast someone like that over mm. things like that because to them it's a weird thing to get excited about. But why is it? Because that's a part of life. Yeah, because I saw people on Lab Bible that were that were like, oh, this is a bit fucking weird. And people were yeah. applying to him being like, yeah, like you getting fucking ecstatic over goals in the pub. Yeah. Is any that any yeah. different? Yes. Yes. Oh my God, that's so true yeah and that is so true mm, it's just what people find find happiness in i think something. also though like i think that guy knows that it is funny that he's so passionate about sprinkles because you've never so. heard that before mm. and obviously i never even knew there was a difference between different brands sprinkles and stuff like that so yeah he had to do um the train boy had to do a video proving that he's not fake and he's not putting it on because people, people were like, is this some sort of funny act where you're like really over the top or like you're playing some goofy, geeky character? And he had to do a video basically saying like, no, this is generally this is what I love doing and stuff. Fucking yeah. hell, yeah. that's crazy. Uh-huh. So what if he was? Just, yeah. He's having a good <laughs> it's time. It's funny anyway. And I'm not being funny. People <laughs> like, it's weird because people like that, they get the attention and they get the views and they get the follows yeah. because they're so out of the ordinary. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Great. Like great. that guy, the guy making the meals and dancing at the moment. 
that everyone's posting. Oh my god, he's on everyone's for you page. Actually, Bless all, him. And I don't is, get it. I do not understand it. I hope that one day he comes out with why he does it and when he yeah. started doing it. But it's just hilarious. Some of his meals are disgusting. It is disgusting. And also a hundred percent he's pouring on some really hot stuff on top of things. Like he burns his mouth because he chucks it straight in there and then he just dances it off. Yeah. Do you think that's why he does it? Because he's like Fuck my mouth. Okay, yeah, let's dance this off. Yeah, he to wear off the heat. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Christ. We'll move on to one of the main topics of today's thing. Is there is a TV show that is sweeping the nation at the moment. I think everyone's watching it. Yep, and I mean, we binged it all the way through. I think we watched it in two days. Two, three, three days. I think it was about three. It took about no longer than a week for us to Oh, yeah. And uh, I'm just... I'm really surprised. I'm pleasantly surprised. And obviously, we're talking about Squid Game. Huh? It is the most popular show on Netflix. It's beat Bridgerton. Bridgerton, it was about 82 million views in their first month. Uh, Squid Game is 111. That views. is mad numbers. It is mad numbers. But one thing that I want people to pay attention to is the fact that Netflix have said that they count a view as someone that has watched the show for two, longer than two minutes. That's mad, isn't it? Yeah, so you can just watch it for two minutes and it counts as a view. So. Yeah, I said to James that I think it should be judged on if you watch two minutes of the last episode. Yeah. I, I or think the, f- the full episode, the full first episode, that kind of yes, thing. Yes, yeah. Because um, if you get to the last episode, then surely that's classed as you've watched it. Because somebody said to me, oh, yeah, I've watched Squid, Ga- Squid Games, but I'm only on, like, the seven episode. Well, then you haven't watched it, have you? Because you don't know how it ends. So you haven't mm. watched it. Do you know you're, what I mean? You're watching You're Squid watching Games. Squid Games. Yeah. So that doesn't count until you've watched it. Mm. Like, do you know what I mean? But then yeah. it's the same with like podcast count. Like when somebody even clicks onto our podcast, or even clicks onto the episode, straight away it's a count. Yeah. But yeah. with other things, as to, if you've completed something, mm-hmm. you know, it, it doesn't get counted until you've done it. So it's just, it is odd. But there's, there's a story for Squid Games, which I find really interesting with it. The guy, the, the man that made it, I don't know his name, but he had the idea in 2008, which is, Years and how many years ago? That's like what? Um, um, that's over ten years. Twelve years ago. Yeah, about twelve years ago. That was the year that the first Iron Man movie came out. Yeah. And it's a battle royale film. It's people pitting against each other. And this was this was before Hunger Games came out as well. So he had this idea before mm. Hunger Games because there could be people that watch this that are like, this is like a Hunger Games ripoff. But he had this before. Yeah. It's just he took it to studio, to studio, to studio, and they just wouldn't have it. Yeah. And he persevered for 12 years. It's like years. that Ro- J.K. Rowling, isn't it? Yeah, I think she had that problem. With Harry Potter she? as well. Yeah. Mad, isn't it? Because mm. then they, they both became really big things. Yeah. And this is the thing as well, where studios, they all want to do sequels. They all mm-hmm. want to do things that have a big name star. This is a show that is original. It's not got any big name actors, not for Western audiences yeah. anyway. And it's taken the world by storm. It's the most popular thing ever. Yeah. It, it's like if you do put money into original ideas, some of them are going to pay off. Yeah. Do you know what's weird though? Like, I, I maybe I feel like this because of the age I am, but I feel like if that came out in 2012 or 13 or whenever he first thought of it, I personally don't feel like it would have been as big as no. it was this time round. And that's maybe because I am the age that I am, so I'll be more interested in watching it now than I was back then. Mm. But also, like, Hunger Games wasn't that big back then. Like, I watched that and I enjoyed it, but not loads. Not I didn't know many people that watched Hunger Games and enjoyed the, well, it. Well, the first few movies were smash hits, I'm pretty yeah, sure. But, but then like, it died down, I think. Yeah, but, like, obviously Netflix has, imp- like, not improved, but, like, has become more popular. Like, it, most people I know has a Netflix account now. Mm. Whereas when I was in school you would be boring your mates every now and then. Do you know what I mean? What's weird is I hated the Hunger Games with a passion. I really didn't like them. Really? Because the, th- the premise, right, is they're kids. It's in this dystopian world where they're kids and like every year or every few years, they put they pick certain kids and they have to fight each other to the death. Yeah. Who, whichever one wins becomes like the champion and gets to feed their village or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. Ridiculous. And... The thing is about that is it was just... And the way they made them, they were just so depressing. Mm. They made it so dark. And obviously, it's a crappy situation that they're in, an idea, but it was so I mean, Squid Game's dark. But the, yeah, but the thing is with Squid Games is it was dark, but 
the the world around them was still colourful. Their costumes were still colourful. And the games that they had them play were games that you at home could think about mm. how you would do in that situation. And you and they also had twists and turns mm. that changed the plot. With the Hunger Games, it was just them killing each other. So there wasn't much you had to think about. And it was just dark and fucking depressing. And then the sequel, they just put them in the Hunger Games again. They didn't like change the games around. Awful. Yeah, I, I get like what you're it. saying. I get Whereas saying. I think there was so much more appeal Potential, yeah. to this yeah. format. And you also, they added another layer. You've got the mystery of the people that are running the Squid Games. What's going on with that? But I did want to talk about, obviously, what my first reaction was after we finished oh my watching gosh. the first episode. Yeah, so if it wasn't really for me saying, James, come on, give it another try. And James my brother. And your brother, you probably wouldn't have watched it because he was so, he was like, no. I was a little bit traumatised. Yeah. Not going to lie. The thing is, I that sort of situation that they're in, particularly in the first episode, um, I think we can s- we'll spoil like the first like three episodes or mm. something because you know it's been. To be fair, the first episode it was quite scary because they got thrown straight into it. But I think once we knew what was happening, the other episodes didn't seem as scary. For me, it was once they had is the second episode once they had a choice to do it. On yeah, that. you were fine with That's it. That's when I was like, okay, cool, all bets are off. See, I didn't know about the choice. Like, I had a I had an idea about stuff that was happening because the TikTok fucking spoiled it for me. Mm. So I knew majority of the games and majority of the characters, mm-hmm. but I didn't know that at the beginning they had like a choice to then go back a second time, which then I feel that made watching the show a lot easier because then you do think, oh, well, they put themselves in this situation and they know fully well what That's what's going also, on. Because basically we fin- in the first episode, they're all taken to, they can say yes, they're yeah. t- chatted to this guy on a train station mm. and they're convinced they go do these games. They're knocked out. They're taken to this room on an island somewhere and they're made to play this game of red light, green light and basically anyone that's eliminated, they kill. And... At the end of that episode, I was like, they've been knocked out. This is like nightmare fuel for me. I, in a situation like that, where it's fight or flight and you're just going to die, that freaks the fuck out of me. Yeah. And I was like, uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to watch any more of the show. And then we finished watching it and we went to bed and you wanted to watch more. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know if I can. I'm not yeah. going to lie to you. And then I went home and about a day later, I spoke to Billy about it, my brother. And he was like, have you watched any more? I was like, I don't think I can. It's a bit for me. And psychologically throwing it for me. And um, he was like, why? And I was like, that situation where you can't get out of it. He was like, okay, watch episode two. He was like, they have the choice hmm. whether to do it or not. And I was like, and then I, wa- I was like, okay, I will. I watched episode two and it's like, it completely flipped in my brain. I was like, yeah. I need to watch the rest of this. Yeah, Which, yeah. As soon as he said that, that was the thing like, that's then made it different than things like the Hunger Games and other Battle Royale stuff. Yeah. Is that where they've added that bit in where they can have the choice to do it or not. It's really that, interesting. That w- I found really interesting yeah, as well. Yeah, and you know what's annoying is because like, if that wasn't the case, if James wasn't told that they had a choice and he would have ha- found out from watching it, but he wasn't going to watch it because James yeah. is so passionate. He's so set in his fucking ways. <laughs> like, oh my God, like, Tegan, you're watching this. Tegan, you're watching that. Okay, but James is watching this. No, 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 I'm too scared. No, I'm not scared watching that. Me. Yeah, but I couldn't convince you. But if it was the other yeah. way around, I feel like you would have an easier job convincing me to watch something than oh, I would right. have an easier job convincing you to watch something because you're so passionate oh, about what you. you like and what you yeah. don't like and what you're going to give a chance and what you're not going to give a chance. Yeah, okay. So you. I'm, I am really thankful that your brother said, look, mate, give it another go. And we've actually actually really enjoyed it speaking of giving a chance i'm going to try and carve out some time to watch you for you yes yes thank you thank you so much that's a (laughs) excellent program as well but (laughs) going back to squid game i think like (laughs) i love it but one thing that pisses me off about this show same with hunger games same 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 with hunger games same with squid games and stuff like that why do they all like it's so predictable and annoying because they always keep the main character alive and yes. I know what everyone's thinking, it's the main character, but how fucking jarring is it that it's the main character that survives? Because then you're watching something, you're like, oh, this whole time he's going to he's gonna live, he's going to live, he's going to somehow, oh, you think he's going to die because he's off, off the edge of a cliff? Nope, he survived because he's the main character. Like, make it exciting, kill somebody off and get somebody else the main character. A bit like Game of Thrones, never watched it, be told that that's what happened. You would love Game of yeah. Thrones. But, like, I just think that's such a sick idea because it's so the same. Like, the main character's always end up with a happy there well, are not happy ending but always alive and for squid games credit there are at least two or more deaths that i did not think were going to happen yeah same at all yeah 
So, but yeah, they but do. they've coming out with a season two in December, so that makes me feel like. Do you know what my predictions for season two? And I'm going to say this now before it comes out, so everyone, anyone listening, they'll be like, "Oh, wow, I could be wrong." But I think season two, because obviously it's coming out so soon after season one was, was released, it's going to kick off right up, right from the point it ended. Where yeah. where the well, I don't want to say where it ended in case people haven't watched it, but where it ends is where it's going to start season two. And also, I think that a certain someone who has been shot isn't dead. Oh, I know who you're talking yes. about. Yes, and I don't right. want to say, but just because I feel like you have to physically see that someone's been shot, like killed, dead on the floor kind of thing, stone cold out, for me to actually believe it because that's what's happened to somebody yeah. else in the in the, mm. in the show. And yeah, enough said because I feel like I've already yeah. spoiled <laughs> a shit ton. But I don't think you have, no. But um, yeah, if, if that's your thing is that you want the deaths to be more sort of random and it, yeah. it makes it a bit more realistic. I do think you should give like the first at least four seasons of Game of Thrones. You know watch. what I'm like though, we're starting things that have been out for a while. I'm just like, oh my God, that's a bit, a bit slow to the race. But it's mental. The first season, they have a main character throughout the whole season and then... They just kill him off, you said. Yeah, not even in, even it's the episode before the last episode of that season. Mad, isn't it? It's, it's so good. And I, just, I find that so interesting, like just to switch the dynamic and that is very... Um, similar to what happened in the theatre last night as well actually yeah but we'll get to that in a little bit yeah but no they do and that's not even the first time they do it all the time in in, in game of thrones you mm. could constantly don't know who's going to live and who's going to die apart from the past couple of seasons where you're like well they're not going to kill that person now yeah which kind of made it annoying all in all i would rate squid game five out of five five out of five five bags of popcorn I give it five bags of popcorn and five cold glasses of soda to put between my legs yeah, I would. I would fucking enjoyed it, and I'd, okay. I'm obviously very excited for the next one. Yeah, same. and I would recommend it to people to watch. Mm. Speaking of things that other people have watched, I went and saw James Bond. I did not. I cinema. haven't seen any James no Bond, so die. I didn't go and watch it. I was thoroughly impressed. It's not as, for anyone that's watched all of the Daniel Craig Bond films. It's not as good as Casino Royale and Skyfall, but it is better than Quantum of Solace and Spectre because those films. Oh, what pants. a word, Quantum of Solace. Yeah, I know that's the worst one of the Daniel Craig. What films. does Quantum of pants. Solace mean? I don't know. Oh, I haven't watched it in years and years. I haven't watched it since I saw it in cinemas. So that's uh, got to be about two thousand six. So no time to die. Did you cry? I didn't cry. But I got emotional at the end. Ah. I did feel myself like, oh, okay. Because you told you told someone today that you cried. <laughs> yeah, no, I was being, I was being, I, I, I don't know why. You being that. humble. I was being humble, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's no, it's a fantastic film, classic James Bond, good one-liners. There's nice-looking women in it. Beautiful. Anna de Armas is a amazing actress. Who? And uh, have you you you've seen Knives Out with me? Yeah. You know the girl in Knives Out, the cleaner, sort of the main girl woman that uh, is kind originally of. accused of the murder and then ends up in her. Inheriting I feel like I need to see a photo to know who she inheriting is. Inheriting the house at the end. Right. It's her, and she's fantastic. In What's it. her name? Anna de Armas. That's a very cool name. That. Yeah, I think she's like Latina or something. Oh. A very cool name, and she's going to have an amazing. Well, she's already having an amazing career. Two, she knives out at Daniel Craig in it, so her, she's been acting with Daniel Craig in two movies. Wow. Fantastic They're going to hit it off. Yeah, so James Bond was really good. Uh, we've watched Squid Games. That was amazing. I'm trying to think of what other stuff. How are you doing? Brassic. Bra oh, yeah, we started Brassic last I night. I don't know if this is a thing that people can get in America, Brassic, uh, but it's on Sky TV. Yeah. It's fucking it was brilliant. The bull, bull semen episode oh, last night. Oh, my God, it is just absolutely <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> I love Michelle Keegan mm. so much. So anything that she's in, I am there. Yeah. So they were trying to wank off bulls to sell their semen yeah. last episode, weren't they? Fantastic stuff. Yeah. How are you doing <laughs> with... We're watching Ant-Man tonight. We've, we're yeah. doing the Sweet Tea's first ever Marvel watch. How are you finding it so far? You're getting invested now. Yeah, we're doing you? a bit of a marathon. And I am enjoying them, to be fair, which yeah. is annoying to say because I just... You've I, had that stubborn... I've had that stubborn... Oh... Like. I th there's no point starting them now it's been too long like I was just about Game of Thrones but, but the I am is, enjoying it the thing is with this one is it's ongoing so, so you, you can start it yeah like and the thing is there. like everything I, I, I enjoy most things that I watch mm. it's just having the time and the energy to watch it that's the problem I struggle with like there's no d and there was no doubt in my mind that I wasn't going to enjoy Marvels <laughs> at all because it's brilliant 
And I really enjoyed The Boys. Again, another film that I don't think everyone can... The Boys? Another series, sorry, that I don't think everyone can have access to, especially in America. No, they've got it in America. Have they? Uh, Amazon Prime, it's on everywhere. The Boys. Oh my God, watch it then if you if you need it. Gotta if you, love The Boys. Got it's it, like watch the it. anti-Marvel. Yeah. But um, yeah, really enjoyed The Boys, so no doubt I was going to enjoy Marvel. And yeah. Ant-Man... I love Paul Rudd, so uh, I'm very excited really for that. It's really funny. It's really good. And I love Iron Man, so he's been amazing. Mm. In um, Yeah. The, yeah, um, it's been good, to be you fair. You cried when Groot died? No, I don't cry. Me? <laughs> you did, didn't you? No, I didn't so cry. I wasn't expecting. But I did them. I love the Guardians of the Galaxy. Though. I think the reason I, I apparently cried um, <laughs> was because, like... It's just, I just found it so amazing that he literally just said three words. And they got so much emotion out of it. And they got so much emotion. And I felt so attached to him. Yeah. And he had a friend that literally understood every I am group meant. Yeah. And I, and then he was so, and like seeing him upset because he died made me upset. What's mental from this point onwards is that Rocket, the raccoon, Mm. he gets some of the biggest emotional arcs going forward. And he has some of the hardest moments. He's this little raccoon that sort of, he acts like he hates everyone else, Mm. but he doesn't really. Mm. And him learning to have a family and be with a family of people is something that goes over multiple movies going forward. And it's really interesting to watch. And Bradley Cooper doing the voice. He has a fantastic voice as Rocket. He's really Mm. good. Um, But yeah, no, fantastic movies. And uh, we're going to move on to, I think now... Let's talk about, we saw, we went to the theatre the other day, didn't we? Oh, we could yes. talk about the podcast festival. The podcast Which festival. Which one? <laughs> um, let's do the podcast festival first. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Cool. Kind okay. of chronological order. Yeah. I love that word. Chronological. Chronological, isn't it? No, chronological. Oh. I just Actually, said I love a word that I pronounced I, wrong. I prefer chronological, so we'll Chronological. That. That's sicker, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, chron- chronological <laughs> order. <laughs> what is wrong with me today? So... Um, so carrying off chronological order, mm. we went to the BBE, mm-hmm. and then you said BBC, BBE yeah. podcast event in London. It was in Huxton in London. Huxton, we were which is a very nice place, actually. I yes. really enjoyed that area of London. I, I did as well. I had a nice donut place, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. We were... In very industrial, though. Yeah, it was very Like a lot of tall buildings, but they were very like cool shaped and stuff. Mm. We were invited free of charge. Uh, they messaged us on Instagram like it's approaching your podversary, so we wondered if you would like to come. Which we haven't actually mentioned yet in this uh, episode, no, but, but we'll get to it. It's that. coming up. I'm trying to figure well. out some plans for a special episode for that. I'm trying to get <laughs> us into a studio somewhere, but it's you know, I'm trying to get these these people that were originally replying to my emails, now they've stopped replying to my emails, and I'm trying to figure it's this out. It's the setbacks of having a business. It is, yeah. So I'll try and send them another email tonight or tomorrow. But anyway... So we were invited by the BBE to Huxley in London. We didn't really know. We've never been to a podcast festival before. We were very grateful to be asked. I mean, it's nice to have a podcast where someone messages you and asks to make an appearance at their festival. That's obviously Crazy, a lovely thing. So we, tur- we, we turn up there. It's downstairs. It kind of looks like a stand-up venue. If anyone's seen Seinfeld, it looks like when Jerry is performing it with a red curtain yeah very cozy yeah it was very cozy so we sat at a table we got a couple extremely expensive drinks in (laughs) and basically there was a lineup of different podcasters and they were basically they would perform their podcast live and then they would do some sort of question and answers or open up to debate and they would chat things and then there'd be breaks in between those podcasts where we'd network where people people would network and we'd meet people and we met some fantastic people we actually did we met some great podcasters some people that have got very similar similar podcasts to us we met some um, people that do like editing i don't know what they're yeah, called yeah we met that's a sound, it, sound engineer engineers, called that's elliot who yeah was he was very lovely. lovely and also we made good friends with the unhinged and bumbled up yes podcast yeah. a dating podcast where only it was two hosts but only one of the hosts was there his live performance was great because everyone was debating it was yeah. mental it was a, a very um passionate it was very passionate it got to a point where this girl asked him about first dates and who should pay on the first date and things like that and it got into a very fierce debate yeah it did um i put my two cents in yeah what's what's crazy is like it 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 could have gotten a lot nastier but i do there was another there was another podcast there 
um called your aunt your aunties could your never. aunties would never your aunties would never sorry mm. so sorry um and they they s- seem to like tone it down and be like look like everyone has different opinions like yeah. you know th- that's, that's that's just her her upbringing that's how she thinks that's your that's your upbringing that kind of thing so kind of settled settled the tone because at the end of the day we don't need to be at each other but yeah. it's just it's interesting to hear everyone having different opinions and different views mm. on on topics but my, yeah, my opinion got some cheers and then a couple oohs. Yeah, it, which yeah, is great. Con- it, controversial, <laughs> you know. And I'm so out of my depth and it's so out of my comfort zone. You struggled like, a bit, didn't I, you? I yeah, I got. To, we did leave a little bit early because I was just like, this is too much for me. I'm not. I don't like confrontation. I don't like arguments. And I don't like debates. And that's basically what it turned into at one point. And I was just like, oh my god. And like, they ask you as well. They're like, oh, what do you think? What do you think? I'm just like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I do know. I fully well fucking know. I have a paragraph in my head. But am I fuck gonna say it? No. <laughs> we used like, to get that out of you. We I know, but I'm comfortable that. doing it on a podcast when it's just me and my boyfriend, like you know, in the living room. But yeah. you know, when I'm in front of people that I don't know, in an invi- in a in a place I don't know. It just yeah, it just scares me a little bit because oh, obviously yeah. you want you want people to agree with you. I don't deal well with people that are like, nah, no, yeah, you're fair, wrong. Fair enough. We, or um, get angry back. You know what I mean? So yeah. I rather stay out of it. We very briefly got up on stage, advertised our podcast <laughs> a little bit, which is nice. There should be like we we might find a photo and we ne- which we need to message him about. Actually, there'll be a photo yes. coming onto the Instagram soon of us on the stage, as well as a little video of James talking, not me, mm-hmm. um, for obvious reasons. I'm a nervous fucking wreck, <laughs> and so James was just advertising our podcast, and I was yes. just standing there like a melon. <laughs> yeah, we were a moral support for me. Yeah, I guess we will. Um, yeah, I'll try and find that photographer guy, and I'll me- I'll message him. He followed us so we'll have to find him but no it was a great experience and they would like us back next year i think to actually perform on which stage. scares the living daylights out of which me which we will have to get you used to which will have to get me absolutely paralytic drunk to get back yeah. up on that stage or, or we should just like perform the court case in front of our friends or something oh my god or i like would i would just say that i'm really really ill i can't come and leave james hanging <laughs> <laughs> i'll just do it on my own You'll like, be all right, though. You don't care about that type of stuff. Like, you literally used to work for a radio station. This is so out of my depth. I understand that, yeah. But the thing is with court case is court case, I feel like now, is very much our baby. And I wouldn't feel as comfortable just doing it on stage on my own. I know. And to be fair, yeah. I would be absolutely fine, like, after, like, 20 minutes of actually talking and being on the stage and, like, getting some interaction. But it's the initial getting up there. But to be fair, everyone was nervous that going up there. And you could tell that people... Like especially the unhinged and bubbled up podcast, he was he was he said himself, I'm really nervous, and I think that's the best thing to do is just be open about the, the fact that you are nervous, and then hopefully people won't give you a hard fucking time. Yeah. He did seem very very very, very nervous, yeah. but he did get into it. But to be fair, he was on his own, and mm. the, the, just before him there was a group of four lovely ladies who went up there, and they all had each other's back and stuff like that's that. A so good point. it's a bit of a completely different dynamic. Yeah. The the one thing that I took away from from watching them as well is some of them touched on some hot button issues and they didn't seem scared to do that at all. No. And obviously we cover some controversial stuff, but I would like to do some more in the future. I think the reason we don't is because I'm 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 very set in my ways and what I yeah. say and what I don't say. And like I'm one of those people that if someone tells me an opinion and I don't agree with it, I'll just say that I'll agree with it even if I don't. Yeah. So when we're at that event and people are saying that they don't agree with like something that someone said, I'm like, "Oh my god, what? They've just said that they don't agree with them." <laughs> like I'm so not used to that being mm. a situation. Like I just thought it was society nor society norm to be like, "Oh yeah, you're right." And then be like, "No." Yeah. Like behind their back, which yeah. is awful, but I think it's just because I don't like confrontation. So I, yeah. I just try and please. It. I'm a people pleaser as well. So I try mm. to please everyone and make sure that they're. Yeah. Own, do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I completely understand. I mean, there's been some stuff in the news lately, like the Dave Chappelle stuff that I would love to talk about and some other things. And <laughs> that Jesse Nelson stuff in the news at the moment. Yeah. Uh, which I think, I personally think she I is. Like, I'm also not educated on that type of thing. Like, right. they were saying, like, words that I've never heard of. What, and like black fishing? Yeah, like, I didn't know anything about that before. So I don't want to, like, start talking about something that I don't know anything about because yeah. then who the fuck am I to say stuff? Do you know what I mean? Mm, yeah i mean yeah personally i mean black fishing that one is fairly simple it's just when white people try and act yeah, and look now black. i get it but i hadn't actually heard of it before yeah and uh, obviously ap- apart from i th- we can't exactly be historic authorities on that subject we've no. not lived as black exactly. people but i mean we can still say that i think i do think she's black fishing a bit and i think it's a bit weird 
And I also think it's disrespectful for the black member of Little Mix. Yeah, and I just find it crazy how... She, I don't, uh, the part that I don't understand is she left a group because you couldn't deal with the limelight to now go and do something solo. Where there's more Where there's lo- more pressure, more limelight. Yes, there's probably not comparisons, mm. but she's then unfollowed those three girls that she worked closely with for many years, doing loads of albums with and tours with. Yeah. And I just find that crazy. And it's just like a, a One Direction situation where Zayn left and they were went their separate ways and it is quite sad to see for like young fans looking up to them that they've literally all just dropped each other and they're probably thinking oh my god do you know what i mean like it is horrible i know but i mean you actually we don't know who unfollowed who first no we don't we don't but i just thought yeah Mm. but no i'd be interested if you guys want us to talk about the dave Chappelle stuff because i found that very interesting but possibly that's also something that i didn't know about until that day and i got told about it and yeah yeah, that I I find those topics very interesting. Well, that was the podcast festival. Yeah, really that good. Was to be on indoor. Really grateful that we got invited. Yep, I- here's to next year's one and hopefully many other. If there's any podcast festival um, organisers listening, we are more than happy to go to podcast festivals. I feel like so I need to go to a couple more to yeah. like you know get more comfortable and familiar with the situations. Give it a year, we'll be performing at Glastonbury. Oh my god, no, thank you. In one of the tents, Ray right at the back. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck sake. So the last bit we wanted to talk about, we wanted to talk about the fact that we went to the theatre last night and watched a play that goes wrong. Mm-hmm, it yeah. is exactly what it says in the tin. A play went wrong. It's about a murder mystery. Um, they lived in this manner and there was loads of characters. Found out who murdered the prince, I believe it was. There was mm. affairs um, and everything like that. The whole storyline and all the characters and who they are to the king. And Yeah, so it's sort of like it's about a cast of actors that are putting on a play that is a murder mystery. And you're kind of, and you're watching them perform this play, and everything's going wrong. So the set will fall down, people will forget lines, actors will ch- have to change to other actors and things. Yeah. So and the, one of the main characters um, died, but and then the character came back, but somebody else was playing her, and yeah. it was so funny. The lines they kept on messing up their lines. Set would break. Um, it was just yeah, it was really really good, so really funny. funny. Um, and there was one character as well who who was my absolute favorite he inter- he didn't interact with the audience but like when the audience would like laugh or clap he had this priceless face yeah. of like pure su- shock and joy yeah. it was brilliant and he was just and he then he would like clap like a little kid whenever yeah. we would clap yeah. and it was like he was so fascinated because it's like, it's like almost like he's never heard of clapping before like that's what it kind of was i think he was more just like happy that the yeah. audience was reacting to stuff it was that he it was, was saying yeah it was brilliant like oh yeah. it really made me laugh it was a good sh- it was a good play and i do recommend it to anyone in the uk they're currently on tour at the moment they are they're touring everywhere yeah get some tickets go and watch it you won't regret it i was very surprised when we got there that one of the leads was someone that i used to work work with and that i was in a short film with his name is tom bullpit and he was the detective inspector guy yeah he was really good yeah i was in a short film soames war which is on youtube when i was in college and i was the second lead with him and i was surprised to see him in it and then we worked in a bar together in chichester yeah a few years ago james dropped in a text and said that he saw him and everything and they've had a nice little chat this morning which was really nice yes yeah it was great i'd love to get him on the show and one of the reasons and he touched upon it at the end of his show one of the reasons that i want to talk about it today is that there's a huge thing in the uk at the moment a campaign about getting people back to watch the theater because yeah when we went into lockdown and when people went into furlough and stuff like that people like theater workers and plays and stuff they didn't get the sort of furlough support and things necessarily Mm. that we did and that other people did and so they've struggled like a lot and so it's really they're really struggling for money and they need more people at the theater they need more butts and seats and i think it's important if you can and if you have the disposable income to go uh, then you yeah. should go and you should enjoy theatre because it's so much different than going to the cinema or something also, like that. Also, nobody ever talks about, like, they talk about going well, on a date. They talk yeah. about going to the cinema. Mm. But something like that, that would be amazing for a, a date. date. Like, why does date. nobody talk about taking their partner, no, not a partner, but, like, their date to a theatre? I feel like 
if you were going on like a first date, yeah, obviously to the theater, not. It would have to be like amateur dramatics. Yeah, it couldn't be a show like Les Mis because no. it'd be sold out. No, but and expensive. But if it, I feel like a couple of dates in, that's like the perfect thing to mm. do. Like yeah. you'd go out for dinner or drinks before, then go to the theater together. Like that's so much better than the cinema. Like I love the theater. Mm. I didn't. I had never. Re- I haven't gone that much in my time. But every time I do go. I really enjoy it. And I'm going again to Greece next month and I'm really excited for that. Yeah, and, and we've I've got, got two. Limiz next year. Oh, and Book of Mormon we've next year. Got the Book of Mormon first, I think, in yes. February and then Lamez in March. Yeah. Book of Mormon, I'm so excited. So for. excited. I've been waiting years to we, see this yeah, play. Yeah. Years. I've purposely not heard any of the songs. Nope. I've not watched any of the theme, but I'm a I don't fan. really know what it's about. Like, I know what it's about, but, like, what happens and stuff. Like, I don't have spoilers. No, I believe what it's about is that these two Mormon boys yeah. go over to Africa to try and preach their religion to yeah. native African people, which sounds funny. But um, it's by the people that created South Park, so it's going to be really pushing There's the another one. I want to watch... Um, was it like Jamie? I think it is. There's one called something. Everything. Everyone famous talking about Jamie. That's on Amazon Prime. As a yeah, film. there's also a, a theatre production of Everyone's it. Everyone's talking about Jamie. Yeah, I think there's a theatre of it as well. And uh, also, dear Edward Hansen, I want to see Edward that. Dear Edward Hansen, I want to see the play. I do not want to see the film because uh, yeah. apparently the film, the film, it's coming out soon, like in the next couple months, and it's not had a great write up. Mainly because the guy that you know our friend is obsessed with. What's his name? That makes di- 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 Ewan? Di- di- have- yeah, our friend Ewan, but oh. he's the guy that he's obsessed with oh, that I does the music. Can't remember. Um, but basically, he was in the original Dear Evan Hansen play years ago, and he's in this new film playing the same character. And so he's about 35, 38, oh playing a high schooler, and all of the other characters are high school age. So he just sticks out like a sore thumb. It's bad, isn't it? And I'm just like, I'm not going to see that. That doesn't look right. Yeah. No, but yeah, I do highly. And I've got actually, I've got a news story related to the theatre at the moment. I'm sure you've heard. I think also what I wanted to say is like the play that goes wrong. I wouldn't say it's an actual like theatre. There isn't like much of a story. Like there's a storyline, but it's not much of a storyline because like it gets interrupted a lot, like with laughs or with jokes or with pauses or with things that go wrong. So it is, it's like, it's not really anything serious like the storyline like because obviously someone dies and then they come back as a different character so it's hard to follow along so if you were someone who's not really invested or interested i find it hard to stick to a storyline that's the perfect one to go to because it's just it's just meant to be funny it isn't anything like do you know what i mean i would say it's the deadpool of theater in the fact that it's a play that knows it's a play. It's very meta. You've not seen the Deadpool movies, have you? No. Basically, Deadpool knows he's a superhero and he knows he's in a movie. Really? Which is Yeah, that's what makes him so funny. And yeah, and so he'll talk to you. He'll talk to the screen and stuff. Such, such funny films. Is that and Ryan Reynolds? Yeah. That makes sense. Oh. Yeah. So, De- yeah, Deadpool's are films where he knows he's in a movie and he knows he's in a superhero Yeah, film. so that's basically, yeah. And uh, basically, the play that goes wrong, they know they're putting on a play. You know you're watching things where it's going to go wrong and you know that it's a play when you're watching it. You're not trying to suspend. Yeah, they the interact league. with the audience and stuff. Like, it, it's just funny. Yeah, so that's yeah. what I would I would say it's, say it's like and it's fantastic. It's a great funny play start to finish and yeah i would end on a story that is related to the theater industry so one of the big the main big boys of theater is i'm sure you've heard of the name andrew lloyd weber nope haven't heard of the name okay mad i don't even know much about theater and i know who andrew lloyd weber is mad um but anyway he has created some of the biggest plays of of all time on the west end such as him like cats Oh, like he may cats. Yes. Of course you say that one first. Yeah. Well, that's because that's what this article is about. Oh, okay. So you know, it was was it last year when the Cats movie came out? I think so. And it was slated by everyone. Some of the worst reviews for a film I've ever seen. One reputable review place. Their one sentence review was, "The worst thing to happen to cats since dogs." Oh. Awful, awful film. Well, obviously, Andrew Lloyd Webber created the original Broadway play of Cats, and he wasn't a fan of that film very much. And he said, and it says here, Andrew Lloyd Webber hated the Cats movie so much, he went out and bought a dog. 
<laughs> so apparently, um, he said in an interview with Variety, he said um, it was going to be a sp- blah, blah, blah. He said he found the film ridiculous. He said uh, Cats was off the scale all wrong. There wasn't really any understanding of why the music ticked at all. I saw it and I just thought, oh, God, no. Um, it was the first time in my 70 odd years on the planet that I went out and I bought a dog. So the one good thing to come out of it is my little puppy. And basically, he tried to get on a plane with his dog and he said that it was an emotional support dog. And uh, he said that I needed him with me at all times because I'm emotionally damaged and I must have this therapy dog. And the airline wrote back and said, can you prove that you really need it, need him? And he replied, yes, just see what Hollywood did to my musical cats. Uh-huh. <laughs> and the approval came back with a note saying no doctor's report were part of required. <laughs> and his dog was allowed on the plane. That's so funny. But ridiculous. And I think... That's so mad, oh, isn't it? It's so great, isn't it? And I think it's a great way to end the show. I'm never going to yeah. watch that movie. Absolutely. Um, so we're going to end the show. What a great what a great episode we've had today. Yeah. I hope you guys have enjoyed our stories about Squid Games and festivals. Our reviews. Our reviews, yeah. Squid Games, Bond, festivals, plays. It was all today and it was all go and i hope you guys enjoyed it please if you've got any suggestions for stories like max sent in at the start of the episode or if you've got advice if you need some courting with james advice please message us on instagram which is at court case podcast or visit our website www.courtcasepodcast.com for all of that guys perfect we will see you all next week have an amazing weekend bye guys chat to you soon bye bye